Yo, what's up guys, Andre here, welcome to another video, so for this video, I'm, I'm going to be talking about my Python deck finally. Now, don't get me wrong, I still only, as you can see, I still only own the one Python. I will never craft the second one, just because I know that once I craft the second one, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to, going to go ahead and pull a third one out of the pack. I'll finally get the emblem, but I'll be salty, because I'll have three Pythons, and I'll have three Pythons when I know I'm only, at, when I know I'm only ever going to play two, because I, there's, there's no world in which I somehow want to play three, at, at least at this point in time. Anyway, let's go and talk about the deck. So, I, uh, there's a lot of like interesting choices here, and, and I guarantee you that uh, some of you guys are gonna like disagree with me on some of them, but that's fine. We, we can go ahead and talk about it. So three, yeah, three staircase. So you might be wondering why I like staircase, but staircase is actually insane to me because it follows the same vein as say that of, as say that of polyphonic roar, in which in which you essentially get like inflated mana for no reason, and that's really really cool. So. You might be saying, okay, what, what Andre, you don't, you don't have enough creatures to, pro to, 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 to proc it easily, but I do. Like, you actually play a lot more early game creatures than people give you credit for. <laughs> so, you can, like, maybe say play it on one, because you have, like, a, I think it's like a 40% chance to have it, to have it in your opening hand. So you go ahead and, like, play it on one. You will probably pop, will prob will probably pop it by, say, at, at latest, if you somehow don't play any creatures, you'll probably pop, pop it by, say, turn five, turn six. That's gonna be around the time where you wanna have where you wanna have sibyls anyway. So you can get like if you, if you get the sibyl, you can play the sibyl. If you get like say star phoenixes or ALS, those are very nice as well. Yeah. Additionally, and this is the other big part, staircase is actually a detriment to people who are playing Bahamut's versus you. Cause if you go nine mana, nine mana creature plus like staircase, ordinarily it would have been very, very good for, for, for people to just like want to Bahamut you. Like for example, if you make a 10-10 Israfil, then generally the only way that, that people can get rid of it most most of the times is to go ahead and Bahamut it. Unless of course they're like, unless of course they have Scythers, unless of course they have Emeraldas or whatever. But yeah, like, so if you Bahamut that, you you let me draw four cards to possibly draw into my Bahamut to Bahamut you back. And that's a very, very feels bad play. But, but that's, that's a really, really cool aspect of it. Like Staircase is basically, is basically drag, uh, Dragon's Council. If you don't know what Dragon's Council is, it's it's four mana Dragoncraft spell. Discard a card, draw draw three cards. Except here, you instead of just instead of just like drawing like random stuff that you don't need at the time, you get guaranteed creatures or guaranteed gas, like guaranteed plays that, that, they, that you can like make, and that's and that's very very powerful to me. Like so, essentially, if you get to ten mana and you, you have a staircase activate. You, you, you've essentially, you're, you're essentially getting to play 14 mana that turn. That's insane. That's actually insane. Three Dragon Summoner. Dragon Summoner is very, very nice. So, as always, when it comes to Dragon Summoners, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a little bit of like math and like ratios involved. So I'm just gonna talk about that really quickly. So as you can see, I'm playing three from the Summoner. Well, really two, because you're gonna have, because you're gonna have a Summoner in play when you activate this. So two from Summoner, three from Ayala, Two more from Star Phoenix, that's currently seven, ten from Sybil, and then eleven from Python. So currently when you when you when you do the mouse, you, you wanna you wanna go ahead and do it like X over eleven. So so at the moment you have you, you have six possible ramp options they can pull, so that's six out so that's about six out of eleven. I don't remember the, the exact like number for that, but uh, it's it, it's about like it's about like sixty percent. Well, a, li a little bit over sixty percent, maybe like sixty six percent ish. You you have the one python, so you have so you have a one and eleven to get the pythons. So like so so it's not gonna you know hurt all the time, but that's that's very very cute and, and very very nice to, to to go ahead and have the option to like pull it off off of this, which is one of which one of the aspects of where it shines over say Prince of Darkness. You have a two and eleven to get the Star Phoenix. Like, like pulling up Star Phoenix from Square Enix is actually a lot. It's actually a lot better than you might think, especially if you're going first, because that actually means they get to do some really annoying things. Like for example, if you're going first, you can and they play out like say like one one or something like that as aggro. You can now go Dragon Summoner, pull up the Star Phoenix, get the Star Phoenix, double trade, double trade into their board, and now suddenly as ramp you have the board. When when they lose the board, that's very, very awkward for them because it means that you probably win that game. And then of course you you have the two summoners in order to get a go again, which is very, very nice because like you can pair summoners with Blazing Breath, which is, which is the card I'll talk about next. And that's, and that's very, very cool too. So three Blazing Breath. Blazing Breath is your anti-aggro tool. I don't think there's a world in which you, in which you never ever play Blazing Breath just because aggro is just very, very prevalent, just because aggro is always good. 
three Oracle. It would not be a Ramp Dragon deck if you did not have Oracles. Um, unless, of course, they somehow make something that's somehow better than Oracle. I doubt that will ever happen, but hey. Three Salamander. Salamander is very, very cool. You know, it's very, it's very, very anti aggro, very, very wave cleary. Two Grimnir. So, you might be wondering why why Grimnir is not true. So, for decks like these, because if you notice, I, do, I don't have Saha package. For decks like these, when I don't have the Saha package, that does mean that I have to play a little bit more like early early game creatures. So, for now, I'm, I'm playing two Grimnir. One of the things that people. The. The, the people who, who like disagreed with me when I said when I said that like Python was like what yeah, sorry when I, when I said the Python was like good or whatever it was that like oh well you don't have we don't have Saha yeah we well, don't have Saha Israel anymore to to, to, to to clear boards well in the event that you have the Grimnir or whatever in your hand you can just go and play out Python like they, they go ahead and they make a board you go ahead and Grimnir the board away it face for eight you have late game bombs they're probably out of cards you probably win that game. It's also very, very nice for aggro because you just you know go ahead and like slam it down on slam it down on three. You have to make trades. You can go ahead and evolve your Isla next turn if you need to. Good stuff. Good stuff. Three Isla. Isla's very, very core, like, just because it's very, very cumbersome for for people to want to be able to remove it. Just because if they remove it, that means you get mana. If and people are very, very adverse to giving you mana because because they, they think that that's how you're supposed to beat it. But no, like what like in reality, what, what I think you need to do is I need is I think if you have the hand to do it. You, you want to for, you want to try to force them to use the mana to make a mistake and then punish them on the mistake. But a very very good, very, very good, uh, good card overall. Two star things from Square Enix, like I said, it's very very nice because you just go ahead and get to and you get to go ahead and get to trade early in order to be in order to be like more anti aggro -y. Like if you if you think if you think they might go versus slower matchups like like say for example if you think you might go versus Control Blood or something like that you can go ahead and you can you can maybe play Scythers instead just because Control Blood doesn't really play creatures but I I would err I would err on the side of caution and just you know pa uh, play anti aggro. Very simple Sybil is your Sybil is your key to how to how you make it to the to the mid game and sorry to how you make it through the mid game and, and start start going towards your late game. It's a very very nice card overall. Bluest water, yada yada. Three fervor again. Fervor lets you draw cards, which is very very nice. It also heals you up. Also, uh, also also grants you back star phoenixes if you have any in the graveyard. Very very nice card overall. And now onto my late game bombs. So, as you can see, I'm pl I'm playing a variety of, of different late game bombs. I'm playing a total of. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So, is it six? Yeah. A total, a total, a total, yeah, a total of uh, 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 six different like, like, like individual like like game bombs, and then like, and then uh, and then overall as a whole, twelve. So I'm just gonna talk about I'm just gonna talk about each of them individually. First, first up is Olivia. So as you can see, with the rest of these cards, with the exception of, with, with the exception of say Zeus. Technically, Queen of the Jet Sea and Bahamut. So a lot of these dudes, they they want Evos in order to you know be effective. Olivia included. So, and one of the things that's very, that's very important is that like when you play Olivia versus people, Olivia is not a very very common card. So naturally, when you play it versus people, they're not going to expect it. They're not going to have. They're not gonna, they're not going to know how to suddenly play around the fact that they you now have Evos again. They have no Evos to contest, and being able to have five to six Evos per game is very very nice. Two Israfil. Again, Israel is very, very core because, like, it's, it's the, it's, it's like a mid to late game bomb for you, just because it's an eight, it's an eight, sorry, it's a nine, it's a nine, uh, nine mana creature that's an eight, eight, becomes a ten, ten, when you, when you go ahead and evolve it, probably nukes and, and or clears the board immediately, then it's just like sitting behind, threatening to deal 12 damage on the next turn, 12 damage is a lot of damage from a unit, especially to come all at once. Very very terrifying, and <laughs> and we'll usually win you games before you have to play Python, or maybe even say after the Python. Additionally, it also heals you. The heal is actually very, very is actually very very relevant because as you because as you can see, like you for a lot of these creatures because because some of them don't have because some of them like need evos or whatever. You're not always going to want to use the evos on them, which means that you will take some damage and and just you know being able to heal off the chip damage while you go ahead and establish another threat. Another threat that's very very nice. 
one prince of darkness so you might be wondering why one prince like wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't playing prince just be better okay so as i said in my sleeping uh, yeah, as i said in my sleeping in on python video for prince of darkness when you play prince of darkness versus other decks that have bahamut like a lot of times if you're the if you're the person that you're playing if the person that you're playing against is good and, and they're tracking your hand they'll know if you don't if you don't have any more bombs or not and most likely like in the event where you have like three bombs in hand like you're pro you're like you're probably playing one of them anyway or sorry you're probably not playing prince of darkness in those games so so most times like if i'm tracking your hand i can, I can keep track of your hand like and, and figure out exactly okay how many cards in his hand are saving cards and, and how many cards in his, in his hand are cards that he actually got from his deck well sorry they actually got from his initial deck and eventually at some point i'll know when you don't have bahamut's so i'll just like start slamming down bahamut's satan deck can't actually answer bahamut's yeah so so one trade-off is that is that with uh is that with python you get to keep you get to keep bahamut's in your deck and that's very nice however obviously there's a limit to how many how many late game bombs you can play in dragon like i got the limit like i'm still i'm staying with 12 and even then like sometimes i feel like i got a little bit too high but, but but that's the, but that's like the that yeah, but that's like the, the total amount that you need to play if you want to play this kind of deck, and and obviously sometimes you're, sometimes because you, because you do have a lot of cards on this deck sometimes you're gonna have like a lot of these cards in your hand. Now, one of the things that uh, that someone that someone said to me like like when they're like disagreeing with, yeah, when they're like disagreeing with me when I thought that like when I thought the pipeline was good was that oh well what if you only have like four cards in hand and then sorry what if you only have like four cards left in your deck and you're playing versus something that I can like outstall that well. Here you go. This is your Prince of Darkness. Prince of, Prince, Prince of Darkness is gonna be your balance breaker. Like, if you if you only have like four cards left left in your Python deck or whatever, you go ahead and play Prince. Prince resets you back to ten. At like, so that's maybe say fourteen turns. Fourteen turns or so, you can cause a lot of havoc. It's 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 very very powerful overall. Just because like. Dealing with both Python deck into Satan deck, that's I, I don't think there's a deck alive that can probably that can probably deal with that. That's just way too much. Three Bahamut would not be a dragon deck if would if you sorry would not be a Ram Dragon deck if you didn't have Bahamut's. Just because there's simply nothing better. He's he's the world ending dragon for a reason. Two Zeus. Zeus Zeus is one of the ways they close games. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually swap the Zeus for Genesis, however, however, that will in fact interfere with your that will in fact in interfere with your dragon center pulls, so I, so I don't think I would do that. The the nice thing about Zeus is that he lets you go face while having while having a board and also having Bane to make it actually very very obnoxious. Because now because now suddenly thing, things like say Albert don't actually get through you because Albert touches Zeus once he dies. So it's, it's very very fun. The other thing is that like in this deck like you don't need the damage more you, you don't need the extra damage from Genesis because ideally you, you just want to be able to out pressure people. Like, because like you play so many late game bombs, like eventually one of, the, eventually one of them is gonna stick. When they stick, you just go ahead and like amp it up with, with, with Zeus and just probably just kill them. One queen, one queen of the Dread Sea. So queen of the Dread Sea works in tandem with Python, works in tandem with other things. Because like, because again, being able to compress three turns to one turn is very, very, is very, very powerful. Like this is what I, this is what I talk about a lot when I, when I, when I go ahead and like play, when I go ahead and I play dragon. Like, like this is one of the things I like that I like that dragon can do. Is that you? If I play out thirty mana in one turn, you're probably losing that game, <laughs> just because it gives you a lot of different options here. Like so, again, you already have the you already have the standard, oh, Queen of the Jet Sea for Zeus for like Israfil or something like that in order in order to deal like seven damage, or sorry, in order, in order to deal in order to deal five damage, heal for four, and then you just have seventeen twenty five, and then you just have. And then you're just like threatening 22 damage and you have like 25 HP in play. That's a lot. There's also of course Queen of the Dread Sea for Bahamut. For Zeus, you can go ahead and just like play the Queen, play the Bahamut, nuke the board, hit hit face with Zeus, you th you're threatening 18 damage next turn. You have, you have two mass you have a you have a massive board, you have a, a world dungeon dragon. Very, very good stuff. There's Queen of the Dread Sea for Israfil. And for Olivia, this is nice because you get to heal four, you get the evil point back, you get to give it to you get to give it to Israfil. Israfil gets to nuke the board again, still threatening lethal. There's Queen of the Dread Sea for for Satan, as well as Bahamut. You obviously go ahead and, and order that as Queen of the Dread Sea first into the into the Bahamut into the Satan last, and this way you have 19 damage in play, 
if they if they clear the if they clear the, the Bahamut, they most likely can't clear the clear the Satan. If you pick up well, literally anything from the Satan deck, aside from say, aside from say maybe say Servant of Darkness, because Servant of Darkness is not Storm or anything like that. That's still very very powerful because you still get to like well have a bunch of late game bombs. And then lastly, there's there's the ones with Python like, like the Python like the Python ones are actually very very nice just because like. One of the things that, that people said that people said to me about Python is like, okay, well, if you want to play the Python, you need an Evo play just because you know, obviously, if it doesn't have Evos, that you know, it's less, it's less, it's less easier to play it. Which is true, you know, like, like, like they're like, they, yeah, they're like 100% correct about that. But obviously, with Queen of the Jet Sea, that kind of changes things up a little bit, just because again, like you can go Queen of the Jet Sea or Python into Olivia, get, get the, go ahead and Evo the Olivia and have and have 15. I have 21 damage in play, and that's, you know, pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Yeah. And then lastly, the Python. Alright, so the Python is very, very cool. I really like the animation a lot. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. I'll, uh, I, I believe I left... Well, I, le I, I left the animation on my Twitter. I also have... Uh, I'll also be, up be, uplo be uploading the Python game I had earlier. But yeah, so, so Python is, is the why you play this deck. Well, it's this part of the why you play this deck. So with Python, you obviously have the Python. You obviously have the Python deck. So, so we're just going to go ahead and ignore like the all of all this early game stuff. We're just going to be focusing on this, on these twelve threats. So you play the Python. You, you you then have like twelve threats left. left well, so you then have up to twelve threats left in your deck. But additionally, that's just in your main deck. When you go ahead and you and you include the servant the, the servant of uh, sorry not servant of darkness the, the prince of darkness, then and that's uh, and that's nine more threats. I don't count Astrofs as a threat. I mean, I guess technically it is, but I'm not, but I'm not going to count it as a threat just because it's not it's not actually a creature in in, in and of itself, and, 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 be, and because it requires a creature to be in play in the first place. But so that's so, so that's twelve. So that's twelve creatures in your main deck. That's a threat plus nine more from from the Satan deck for a total of 21, 21. Like twenty one is an insane number because like. For, for almost for almost every single deck that, that's like ever existed, like the most like the most like, like any like maybe say like late game going deck or whatever has, has been able to play in terms of threat is like say that of twelve and that of like and that of just like regular ram dragon, maybe and then and then maybe say that like things from like control blood, but here you get to play twenty one, you get to have you get to have access to, to them a lot faster than other decks just because like. Instead of, instead of you know doing like dirtily dirtily things like say playing like like say playing up for favors, no, you can you can you can uh, you can aggressively play a threat each and every turn to, to uh and just like overwhelm people with just with just massive threats. At a certain point in time, you're not you're not gonna be able to answer all of these. Like like you, like you, there's no way that they have like they have like uh you know twenty one like dance of destiny deck. Like, you don't. I know you don't. You, you know you don't. Uh, even if you want to be like, okay, well, I can just like answer with Bahamut or whatever. Like, like you play enough things that, that can that can that can answer a counter Bahamut with you know, with 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 a Bahamut of your own, the Zeus. Like being able being able to just get uh, being able to have the staircase in play to you know to, to draw into the Zeus or sorry to draw into the Zeus or draw into the Baja. Very very powerful. It's it's definitely a lot. It's definitely a lot of fun to play. Just because you'll over, you'll overwhelm most uh, most most like mid range decks just because again. Late game bombs are very very difficult to deal with, especially when you know that they're coming all right away. Now, a lot of times in games, you'll usually see some games where they have where they have ramp dragon. Where I just you know I just ramp into nothing, and that's because largely ramp dragon ramp dragon well ramp in general is, is forced to play a lot of, is forced to play a lot of you know early game like anti aggro stuff whatever. So naturally, when you get when you get to the late game, you don't want to see those cards anymore. You don't. Python guarantees that you don't. Python guarantees that they draw gas each and every turn for the remainder of the game. That's that's very very that's very very powerful and, and that cannot be understated. Like I know a lot of you guys will tell me, okay, well, well, what, well what about all these games where you where you're able to like win with stuff like say ciphers and whatnot? Well, I was well, I was only in those I was only in those positions in the first place because I didn't have Bahamut. Like you know you know who would have let me draw Bahamut? Python. Like you, you know you know who would have let me draw like outs Python. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but yeah. It's a very, very cool deck overall. Like obviously, if you have the vials, I I would definitely go ahead and check it out, play a few games with it. It's very, very cool. Really like it a lot. Also, the Python animation when it comes into play, absolutely beautiful. Oh my god, twenty million out of ten, unbeatable. 
<laughs> but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, go and leave a like and subscribe. And let me know what you think about Python down in the comments below. Do you like the deck? Do you not like the deck? Like, do you think do you think it'll get better? Do you think it'll get worse? You know, go, go ahead and let go ahead and let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys.